Wednesday, March 20th. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning. 9.55 California time, a little bit after the middle of the trading day for the traditional hours, 6.30 California time to 1 o'clock. So we have a very, very quiet index day so far. For fairly obvious reasons, we're waiting for the FOMC meeting announcement to give the market a little guidance, you would think. After, I believe, 11 o'clock California time, uh, so it's a couple hours from now, or an hour and five minutes. Okay. What do we got? We got prices for the indexes, for the most part, that have been a little bit higher than yesterday's high. Now, that's what I want in order to have a potential bearish engulfing if the market can go down below yesterday's low during today and stay lower than yesterday's close. That's a bearish engulfing Japanese candlestick. But I'm not overbought within the last few days. Therefore, I'm not going to get a red sell signal, unfortunately, if it happens in the first place. <clears throat> so be it. And that statement goes for the other indexes. None of them got officially overbought on my custom RSI during the last few days. <clears throat> if one of them had, and then it had a bearish engulfing, we would have a bearish ER sell signal, probably very close to the high of this extended rally and the beginning of the breakdown, which I still think is going to happen, reversal or no reversal, down to a very bare minimum for the uh, spider, uh, 497, but that's really not what I'm expecting. I'm looking for a move down to 477. Now that is 30 plus points, damn near, near 40, lower from where we are at the moment. Yeah, obviously it's not going to happen a day or two or three or five or 10 maybe, but it's going to take a few weeks, maybe a month uh, and a half, to get down that far if I'm right to begin with. That's what I'm looking for, a pretty healthy downside correction in a longer term bull market. This is not a bear market situation. It's a fairly big correction in a bull market. So I like my setup, except for not being overbought. That's what I'm missing. Now we did get overbought, but it was too long ago, March 1st and March 4th. And I need to have it overbought in a lesser number of backward looking days, which didn't happen. Even at the top here, we got up super close to 75. We got up to 74.45. Okay, so be it. FOMC comes out. Let's take a couple scenarios here real quick. Neutral, as expected. The market's already come up a lot in the last several weeks, month or two, and as a result, probably built into a neutral FOMC commentary, this rally, and so I would expect it to sell off some and then to continue up over time. What happens if the FOMC comes out with something bullish? And I'm saying the market is interpreting it being bullish. I don't care what you personally think. The market, if it thinks it's bullish, it'll pop up a little bit more, probably. Now, that just might make new highs for the whole trend, and it may get a lot closer to overbought. Frankly, it would have to be quite a bit of a rally. So, I'm not there. I really can't, you know, expect it to be making a minor new high and get overbought. Probably need more than that. What happens if they come out with something that the market thinks is a bearish type of a commentary? Well, that's a different situation. We already have a high higher than yesterday's high. Currently, it's about unchanged up only 20 ticks, nothing. So it could have a bearish engulfing candlestick, but it won't be one of my signals. That still is bearish. So I'm still going to get a start down. I hope to go down to these 
price levels in the near future that I'm talking about a little bit ago. Next chart. It simply is the one minute chart on the spider for this morning. It went, it opened, it went up a little, went down a little, went up a little, went down, up and, and we are almost exactly where we opened at the moment. So nothing particularly interesting, <clears throat> except we have a high today, higher than yesterday's high. That could be a very relevant piece of information. E-mini, same thing as you would expect. Not very close to overbought at all. Very close to previous tops in the market. We'll see if the commentary from the Fed causes a reversal or not. By the way, you can always reach me at info at ersignals.com. Next chart is the one minute on the E-mini. And so it's just basically waiting for the FOMC meeting, I'm sure, announcement. And the QQQ, very small range so far, a little lower than where it opened. But notice the Qs are nowhere near the highest high for the whole move. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this bearish engulfing on March 8th was almost officially an ER sell signal, but it wasn't quite high enough on the RSI scale. It was the price action I like. It has been a high so far. All I was missing was the RSI high of 75 or higher, and it couldn't quite do the job. Yeah, I don't always get what I want. But this one is on its way down, sort of. A close below 432 is probably going to do the job, and then it'll start moving lower over time. I hope it gets down to 413 to maybe 394 in, of course, a few weeks. Next is the Q's. One minute, very, very sideways. Look at this pennant forming all morning long, half the day. Next, same thing with the NASDAQ futures, NQ, June futures contract. Basically, all the commentary is the same. I want a new low and a new low close for the last two to three weeks. And then I think I'm on my way down. NASDAQ, June one minute chart, same thing, of course, but in great detail. And the Russell 2000 has been going down already. And look at this. It's very, very close to the same thing that the NASDAQ did. We did get a bearish engulfing ER sell signal almost at the top of the market. This came so close to being overbought. It is embarrassing. We have an RSI high of 74.72. I mean, you just can't get closer. This, this would have been a great so far sell signal. But again, I got to stick with the rules. There's no looks like, could have been. It got close. Maybe. None of that. This is mathematics, an algorithm. It is or it isn't. It was just super close. Next is the Russell 2000 one minute chart going sideways, but look at the move down here over the last, I don't know, eight, nine days, something like that. Okay, bonds, futures. <clears throat> Second day up now since it almost got oversold. And I said so. But the most important thing is support area. It's starting to try to move back up out of the support area at the current tick, 11900. So, or 1901 now. So, and high and last, I believe. So, if it's starting, that could be a good omen for the stock indexes if you're bullish. And I'm not. I'm looking for the indexes to go down. And if that does happen, I frankly think the uh, interest rate futures are also going to do the same thing. Why? Because the Fed said something a little bit negative. I'm sure as heck not expecting anything very, very negative. That would be a big surprise. Just something modestly. All the economy seems to need is a little more time, and then it will be solidly in a bull trend past tense. 
2020 hindsight. What about the notes? Pretty much the same thing. There's a chance of a double bottom. I don't think that's going to happen. We're a little higher on the day. Nine ticks, big deal. The bonds were up 10 ticks, big deal. Let's see what happens. Same commentary for notes as in interest rate futures for the bonds. Next, uh, we got the one minute chart on the notes. It got a little bit above yesterday's high and a new high for a couple days and a half. Nothing particularly interesting or dramatic so far. But I'm telling you, we could have fireworks at around 11 o'clock California time. Next, crude oil. Aha! We have a brand new sell signal today. Crude oil. Now let's take a closer look. I don't have the strategy turned on, but we have a higher high today than yesterday. We're also in a resistance area and at the top of it for the third day. Plus today, we have a relatively large, not that the size is all that important. It's just interesting that it got way below yesterday's low. That tells me the ER1 new short scalp is in a very profitable, profitable position at the moment. I'll show you tomorrow. And it'll be out of the trade by the close of today. And ER1 overnight position trade has started at the moment also in a very advantageous, profitable situation. So this is a brand new today at the moment ER official sell signal. Overbought conditions, bearish engulfing, we're on our way down starting today. Um, I am short ER1 at about 81.76, it looks like, give or take a few ticks. And that'll come out tomorrow, I'll show you tomorrow. So, great. Uh, expecting a move down at least to probably 78.30 at a minimum, which is the beginning of some decent support. And this is a daily data chart again. And very, very possibly down to 75.41. Great. Next chart is the heating oil daily data chart again. And we didn't have any sell signal today, unfortunately, or yesterday, the day before. We didn't get overbought. We came close. It's just starting to slip. You know, we're between this rock and a hard spot situation. Resistance above the market didn't quite make it. Support below the market didn't quite make it. And that covers the last month and a half, two months. So, not much commentary. Looks like it's going to slip a little. Natural gas. Interesting. Downtrend, definitely. Looks like it could have had an outside trading range. Today's high is 1.765. Yep, today it got one tick higher than yesterday's high. And we have an outside down day bearish engulfing candlestick. But it's not an ER signal because we're not overbought. Otherwise, I'd have a red um, candle here. And all these other candles would be either green for a buy signal, red for a sell signal, or yellow because it used to be overbought or oversold. And if none of those conditions existed, white. I really don't care about those white bars kind of irrelevant to me. I'm looking for signals or setups for signals. That's why yellow and then very importantly, green and red. So bearish natural gas, looking for a test of lows and probably new lows for the trend. Next, uh, unleaded gas. Now this is one of those ice exchange contracts. I'm not getting updates on. I apologize. NinjaTrader and Connectic, it's data feed company. Uh, one of them has a little problem here. So yesterday I turned to trade station to show you these charts. I'm going to skip that for today. I'm being a little long winded with other charts. Next is gold. It's doing nothing the last several days. It's very, very quiet. Maybe it's waiting for something like the FOMC comments. I don't know, but I am expecting it to dribble off to the support area uh, starting at 2101. 
and we're 2161 momentarily, slightly bearish short term. Next, silver and a bigger longer term picture. Remember last year we had incredible buy and sell signals for both gold and silver. I don't think I've seen something like that for a whole year in precious metals picking off bottoms and bottoms and bottoms and then top and top and top and top and top during the year last year. Uh, this is silver. So for the moment, no signals, slipping a little. It got overbought, no surprise. Probably going to start coming down faster, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it come all the way back down to, say, 23 or lower. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, about 23 or lower. Uh, it's going to take a while, but I think it topped out. Next, platinum. No buy or sell signal at the top, an outside trading range day, but it appears to be a bullish engulfing. Um, and that would not follow my criteria. If that was a bearish engulfing, it still wouldn't work because I didn't get overbought. Too bad. But now we're back down in support. No surprise. Resistance, a little bit of it, stopped the rally. The longer term trend here is obviously down. And I'm loading probably about 1,000 days of data. That's my default daily data, 1,000 days. Three years and change. Um, let's see if support holds or not. We're not oversold. I would have liked that, but I can't say that support's going to hold. In fact, the trend is your friend, and the friend is bearish. But it's really gone sideways for quite a while. This is not easy to come to a conclusion. All I can say is I need to find out if the support level is going to hold. If it doesn't hold, i got to get real, real bearish. If support holds, then we're back in the same ballgame again, bouncing around in this trading range. Next, high grade. Did get up above the resistance. It did get overbought. I said all that in the last few days. And I said it probably would come back to support. It touched it today almost exactly. Now, we're still lower on the day, not a lot, but we hit the support, and it bounced off of it. If this is a bull trend, that could have been a perfect support level stop, stopping point for the decline, I should say, and we might be starting to go right back up into new highs for the trend up. A lot of price action below us, support. I think I've got to talk about this market making new highs soon. I think that's my best alternative at the moment. Next, beans, soybeans. Rally today, got oversold only a couple of weeks ago, but it recently was overbought. This is not very clear to me. It looks like it can rally some more, but I don't like the fact that it's close to being overbought. No comment at the moment. Sorry, I thought I would have something more profound to say, but nothing. Next. And this is the uh, soybean oil daily. Obviously, declining tops over a long period of time, declining bottoms over a long period of time. And this particular leg down may not have stopped. Remember, I've been mentioning that the grain complex, I'm really difficult to come up with longer term bullish commentary in general. All my friendly or short-term bullish commentary has been exactly that. I don't see any major long-term trend changes. I got nothing to use for a huge buy signal. Maybe in wheat, but we'll see that in a minute. Meal. Looks like support's going to get broken. Resistance is trying to stop this rally here. So zooming in on the details. We're back to a little resistance right here and now, but the trend is pretty solidly down still between a rock and a hard spot, and they're fairly close together. I'm going to wait on comments. Next, corn. Now, this is important. We got a buy signal smack dab at the bottom of this bear market, period. I say that because it's there. On February 26th, it's a bullish engulfing in oversold condition. Therefore, ER buy signal on the bottom day. 
right smack right there. Now, we made a high. It drifted off slightly for a couple of days. Now we're going sideways for a couple of days, sort of like a pennant. We'll see what happens next. I have to be bullish because the buy signal has no problem so far. A couple of minor corrections. If you don't get too greedy too quick and your stop is a little bit medium to slow moving, you're still long horn. If you have a tighter trailing sell stop underneath the long position as it goes up, you might have gotten bumped out somewhere in here with a small profit or on that retracement with a little bit better profit. Nothing great, but this stands a chance of improving quite a bit. There's no real major resistance until you get all the way up to maybe 490, close to 500. And here we are at 437. This could develop into a very long-term good trade. And if you don't like sticking around a long time, I'd make a stop something underneath last week's lows, Friday's lows. That's probably where I'd be sitting there with a sell stop to take a small profit on this trade. Next, corn, one minute, sideways. Actually, it's a five-minute chart. Sideways, last few days. Got it down here somewhere, about here, I think. Yeah. And, yep, that's definitely the bullish engulfing day. Lower for the trend, higher in the previous days. High, right there. There we go. So I'm long from about, let's call it 422. And see the same thing on the daily chart. And 38, it's not great, but you know, not bad. Next chart. Here we got the strategies loaded and running and I'm showing you that it's very complex in wheat. I just wanted to make your head spin. Anyway, two buy signals back to back. One was the low day for the trend at that point on March 8th, but the market made another new low on March 11th. That was Friday and a Monday. March 11th now is so far the lowest low for the trend. We got another buy signal on the bottom of the market, like in corn, both so far. The low day, ER buy signals. The wheat's not doing that great. We have a red trade line here. So there's a small loss on this ongoing trade, and that was the ER1 position trade based on the activity on March 11. If you bought because of the signal on March 11, the ER3, which is after the signal day, one, two, three days after, you got it on the low of the day, actually it's one tick above, <clears throat> in two days. Right there. Not bad. Now, it did make a lower low the next day, but not enough to stop us out based on the inputs. And you can see those numbers at the top here in NinjaTrader for the strategy. And it's still long. So our ER3 position trade is making money at the moment at the current tick. But the ER1 position trade for the signals that were on March the 11th, is losing a little bit. The stops are down here. I could play with the strategy and change the stops if I wanted. But what we do not allow you to do is change the entry methods. The entry methods are darn good frequently. The exits kind of allowing you to decide whether you want short term and or intermediate or longer term trades to develop. Period. Next chart is the corn detail, one minute, same strategy, same settings, same trades. Stops to the yellow lines. That's a stop for the ER1 position, the dotted line. I'm giving it a little more elbow room for the ER3 longer term position trade. I could change these whenever I want. The two trades are Pointing to this price right here, the current tick. One trade line is green. That's the one that slants upward, doing very well. The other one is a little bit of a loss. Looking good so far on the average. Cattle. 
Not much commentary. Looks like a bearish engulfing, but we're not going to get a signal because we're not overbought within the last few days. Next, heating oil. I meant hogs, sorry. Not much to say. Flat top resistance, rising trend line, slipping a little today. We're above some support, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce off of the trend line maybe in the next day or two. And the support area as well. Not very sure about hogs at the moment. OJ and, I'm sorry, cocoa and coffee and sugar and cotton are all ice items. And I reserve the right to say, sorry, we got to get those data feed going, Ninja Trader. And then I'll be using those commodities for analysis. You guys have a great profitable trading day. Watch the market at 11 o'clock California time very carefully. And don't jump the gun or overreact too quickly. Manana.